So I started the interview preparation series, like where I am explaining whatever the interviews questions I have faced for different different companies. So in last video, I have explained the or provided the questions which I have faced in embassies. Now in this video, I'm going to provide you the questions which I have faced in JP Morgan. So again, uh, like these are the question for six plus years of experience, six to let's say nine plus also, this will be same. Just how and what uh, with how scenario wise and you are explaining with the confidence that will be different. Okay, so started with the introduction, then I have explained my project, then uh, some questions were like how daily activities are there, like how I commit the code, uh, uh, who verifies the code, means PR and raise, right, code scrum, scrum activities, what are the scrum activities we have to do code review, build process. So these are the uh, basic questions were asked about my current job role. Fine. Then we started with the JavaScripts. So first question was what was, what is the promise and what is the callback? So how do you differ between how promise differs between the callback? So that I have to explain, right? So again, like uh, this question I have already explained in the JavaScript interview series, you can visit that with a proper explanation also I have explained. Then I got asked some coding snippets on the promises. Those I have over here, I will explain later. Then next question was inheritance is JavaScript. Like in JavaScript, how do you create a class? How do you inherit a particular method from a particular class to the child class? What is the use of extend keyword? When the super keyword is mandatory, right? If you have to use the parent constructor or if you have own uh, child constructor, then super keyword is mandatory, right? So just to identify the parent constructor. So that was the question. Next question was shallow copy and the deep copy. What's the difference between shallow copy and deep copy? How do you create a deep copy? Uh, in, in case of shallow copy, if you have a nested object, how it behaves, that was the answer he was looking for. So json.stringify, json.parse, that's how you uh, create the deep copy. That is with the normal JavaScript. But, but again, with Lodash and some libraries are there, which will allow us to use the deep copy. But again, at least json.stringify and json.parse, this, how, by using this, how we create a deep copy, that should be clear. And in shallow copy, if you have an object and inside that object, you have some nested object. So the copied one object, if you change it, it will change to the original object because it doesn't copy the whole data. It just copy the reference of the nested object. So that is the difference they look. Then arrow function and the normal function difference, right? Not just that, how this behaves. In normal function and the arrow function, how this behaves. Because in arrow function, this will point to from where you are calling the function. But in normal function, this will point to the function where we are, okay? then use of object destructuring and array destructuring. So his question was mainly, can we use, like we also know, like working with Angular, we mostly work with TypeScript. So his question was, can we use object destructuring and array destructuring in Angular? So obviously we can use it. Let's say you have a big employee object, so many fields are there. But from that big employee object, you just need certain fields, key value pair data only. So you can use object destructuring over there. So whatever you know from object destructuring, same thing we can use it in our TypeScript also. Fine. So next question was higher order function. First he asked me to explain what are the higher order function and first class function. Then he, uh, then he asked me like what are the default higher order function you know. So in array we have that map, filter, reduce, right? These are nothing but your higher order function which will help you to iterate on the objects, right? Then next question was stack and event loop. What is stack? What is the stack memory? How our JavaScript code get executed? Then how event loop come into the picture, right? What is the micro stack and uh, macro stack? Like uh, again, like this promise example, you can see. After this, he provided me this example. So we we can see we have console.log, then we have promise, set timeout, set timeout. Then lastly, end, we have uh, console.login. So first this will execute, then this will execute synchronous code. Then event loop will come into the picture. Whenever it uh, JavaScript found the async code, it will send to the different callback for the execution API, right? Once it is done the installation, or when it is done execution of that particular piece of code, then it will check if the stack is empty or not. So event loop is a thing which will check like if stack is empty or not. If empty, then it will uh, execute the callback from the promise or the set timeout, right? So promise will have the higher preference than the set timeout. So that was the JavaScript. Then this was a, uh, what do we say, a different JavaScript code snippet for the, uh, explaining the arrow function and the normal function, right? Then this was just to check like how does memory 
allocation works. So we have a variable with foo and a function with foo. So he said like if I execute it, which will execute? So the last one will execute. Okay. Then he moved back to the Angular. So again in Angular, like it was not so many questions like what is what is, but more of a scenario based question it was. So first question was like what is change detection and roll up uh, roll up change detection in performance optimization. So you need to clearly explain what is change detection, zone.js. And whenever we create the reusable component, we should always disable the chain detection, right? Then how do you manually trigger the chain detection by creating the CD de uh, detection reference service, right? Then a normal question was difference between template and the reactive form. When to choose which? So here he want he provided some scenarios. So currently, because I just remember the question, but he explained me some scenarios where he said like, will reactive form be reactive form will be a good option or the template? Right. So see, again, scenarios will be multiple, but whenever everyone will be focused on the reactive form, because in reactive form, you get so many things which are by default, but same thing you can do with template form. But for that, you need to write the custom code. Like let's say from creating dynamic element, dynamic validation, dynamic unable disable in reactive form. It is very easy to do that. But in template form, you need to write the custom code to achieve that. So some uh, various scenarios were there and he was asking like which template, which form you will select, right? So that was the question. Then one question was there like, how do you secure an Angular app? So guard, access is protection, token based API, encryption, right? These are the thing I have explained. Then one more question was that like, what is micro front end? Like every uh, once you are, if you are applying after, let's say experience is greater than five years. So everyone is going to ask this question. They won't go in detail. But they just want an idea like are you clear about the micro front end architecture or not, right? So if you don't have the idea, just have a basic idea clear, just the theoretical part. No one is going to explain, uh, ask everything about the micro front end, but at least your thoughts process about the micro front end architecture should be clear, fine? Then he wanted to know like uh, test cases I'm able to write or not. So in our company also, we were using GitHub Copilot to write the test cases. Before that, I didn't also write. So I clearly apparently said Ki, we are using GitHub Copilot to write the test cases. And according to the code we know, we uh, uh, change little bit, right? So he was uh, okay with that. Then he said like apart, you know, what are the test framework like Jasmine, Karma, J, Cypress, these are the top Again, we have so many, but in Angular, at least these are the top uh, test frameworks we have. Then uh, next question was how to create custom pipe, which you have created. So I explained the custom pipe, pure pipe, impure pipe, transform, how we can pass the parameter or your parameter. Then some example, which I have created in my previous project. Then he came with, uh, then he started with the RHS. So remember, whenever you are appearing more than five years extra, everyone will be so focused on RHS because so many questions will be there on the RxJS operators and so many questions are there, right? For every operator, they can ask the question also. So some debossing is the famous one, right? So instead of that search filter, he asked me to do that on the button click. How do you implement the debossing on the button click? So I explained like we can create a subject and then subject we will subscribe. And again, we will check like whatever the logic we have, it is uh, that subject has done the processing or not. Again, we can uh, use the debouncing on that. Then combine with operator here as subject and the behavior subject, uh, just initialization, current subscriber only data we will send. Then next question is what is cold and observable? Again, this is just the theoretical part. So we will say off operator from operator. These are the hot observable, API call hot observable, but subject behavior, right? These are the cold observable. Then how do you stop the observable based on some condition? So he taken an example of uh, state management with ngrx and then he said ki some data is there which we got we stored in the your store and only two times you need to read that data after that you need to unsubscribe so we have take until right or take take until is like we can pass another observable as an input once this trigger it will automatically unsubscribe or you can pass the take like how many times you need to subscribe so he was looking for that again it was rxjs only how to use fork join? Like how do you, you know, combine multiple subscription and then wait for a single subscribe, right? So fork join he asked. Then he asked me like how do you optimize or increase the performance of the application? So reusability, creating your uh, multi reuse, I means repeated code into moving to a reusable component, pipes, directives, 
chain detection disable in the reusable component forms if our forms are very big try to create in a json format so that ui html will be very less right use the updated libraries uh, your component should be focused on the dom manipulation your api call and everything should be moved to the service so general practices whatever we know and whatever you have actually created that only you need to explain right because the things you have done actually with when you are explaining you will be more confident right so don't just tell like if you have read it somewhere and you are explaining it whatever you have actually done you explain that properly and again you can say like these are other things are also there but make sure you're like i have not done it but i know like we have to take care of this also okay the next question has various ways of component communication so if you have parent child relationship if not like with parent child relationship input output view child if you don't have parent child relationship subject behavior subject routing or even storing the data into our browser storage also so these are the various ways of component communication how to avoid memory leak so he was looking for a sync pipe then you have uh, if you are not using a sync pipe then subscription array you have to push all the subscription to your subscription array on an ng on init you unsubscribe so these are the angular questions he asked me then finally to uh, just to wind up the intro he asked me like because we are working with angular currently angular is trending or even react is trending but after some years let's say or after some month also or some new framework is there or client is asking us to work on some new framework so how much you will be comfortable or how much you will be eager to learn new framework and work on it so i said ki i am basically from a ui technology so either it is react javascript next js plastic js express whatever the tech, js frameworks we have because i know the javascript i know the basic concept so i should be able to with little bit of training or with a little bit of my learning i will be able to learn on the new technology also because i cannot say no to any other js framework as i am in the ui technology so all the framework we have to work so he wanted that confidence like i am like am i just uh, bound to just angular or i am open to work on the other, other technologies also so with this he wind up the question then he asked me like uh, do you have any questions so i asked him about like is this the project level hiring what was the domain i will be working like that question i have asked fine so i hope these questions are helpful if you are preparing make sure like after 5 plus years of experience all know all these questions you are going to face fine so that's it thank you guys if you are liking my videos please do like comment help me to grow and if you have any question there is will be a video uh, sorry chat link whatsapp chat link you can connect on that and you can directly connect with me also fine that's it thank you guys